Howdy folks. Um, today is September 20th. You can see it on my watch. It's 9.45 p.m. I'm going to go through Proverbs. So we are on Proverbs 20 today. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll just jump right into reading Proverbs 20 um, for our daily proverb reading. Um, <clears throat> all right. Wine is a mocker and beer a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. A king's wrath is like the roar of a lion. He who angers him forfeits his life. It is to a man's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. It is to a man's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. Um, a slugger does not plow in season, so at harvest time he looks but finds nothing. The purpose of a man's heart are, are deep waters, but a man of understanding draws them out. When a man claims to have unfailing love, but a faithful man who can find. Wait, sorry, let me read that again. This is Proverbs 20, verse 6. Many a man claims to have unfailing love but a faithful man who can find. The righteous man leads a blameless life. Blessed are his children after him. When a king sits on his throne to judge, he winnows out all evil with his eyes. Who can say I have kept my heart pure? I am clean and without sin. Differing weights and differing measures, the Lord detests them both. That one's kind of interesting to me. I'm not sure... Differ, differing weights and differing measures, the Lord detests them both. Uh, so I don't know if there's commentary on that one, but that one's kind of interesting. There's not commentary on it, so um, I'll probably, you know, um, try to get a little bit of insight on that one. Um, so there's actually a few that I've read that are definitely interesting and um let me just go through finish reading Proverbs and then I'll share any commentary that I have. Um, okay, so Proverbs 20, 11. Even a child is known by his actions, by whether his conduct is pure and right. Ears that hear and eyes that see, the Lord has made them both. Do not, lo do not love sleep or you will grow poor. Stay awake and you will have food to spare. It's no good, it's no good says the buyer, then off he goes and boasts about his purchase. Gold there is and rubies in abundance, but lips that speak knowledge are a rare jewel. Take the garment of the one who puts up security for a stranger. Hold it in pledge if he does it for a wayward woman. Take a garment of one who puts up security for a stranger. Hold it in pledge if he does it for a wayward woman. Food gained by fraud tastes sweet to a man, but he ends up with a mouthful of gravel. Make plans by seeking advice. If you wage war, obtain guidance. A gossip betrays a confidence, so avoid a man who talks too much. If a man curses his father or his mother, his lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness. An inheritance quickly gained at the beginning will not be blessed at the end. I think that one is interesting. An inheritance quickly gained at the beginning will not be blessed at the end. Um, I don't know if quickly gained is, um, what am I trying to say? Like, I don't know, I, I don't know how you define quickly gained, but an inheritance quickly gained at the beginning will not be blessed at the end. I think that that can mean um, you know, sometimes people, um, basically sell their soul for, for money, um, and it's not going to be blessed at the end. Like people that are, uh, doing things contrary to God's word, um, to obtain wealth, success, um, or that sort of thing, it's not going to be blessed at the end. Like that's how I kind of read that. Um, I don't see any commentary on it, but that's like how I would interpret that. An inheritance quickly gained at the beginning will not be blessed at the end. 
Um, so Proverbs 2022, do not say, I'll pay you back um, for this wrong. Wait for the Lord and he will deliver you. The Lord detests differing weights and dishonest scales do not please him. Okay, so that one goes back to Proverbs 2010 when it's talking about differing weights and differing measures. The Lord detests them both. And then this one says, um, 20, Proverbs 2023 20, says, The Lord detests differing weights and dishonest scales do not please him. So there is commentary on that one, so maybe it'll help gain, gain clarity on 2010 as well. Um, and then Proverbs 2024, 20, a, man, a man's steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand his own way? And that's, that's good too. Um, that's, for me, that means like trusting in the Lord. Um, our steps are directed by the Lord and the Bible says that. And we aren't supposed to understand our way. We're not supposed to understand those steps. We're supposed to step in faith in what God is telling us to do. Uh, and it's a step by step. He shows us one step, we take it. He shows us another step. Oftentimes he doesn't show us uh, the end because we may not take the steps to get there or we may try to make it happen ourselves and take the wrong steps. So anyhow, um, let me see if that's the end of Proverbs. Oh, no, we have some more. Okay, so Proverbs twenty twenty five. It is a trap for a man to dedicate something rashly and only later to consider his vows. A wise king winnows out the wicked. He drives the threshing wheel over them. The lamp of the Lord searches the spirit of a man. It searches out his innermost being. Love and faithfulness keep a king safe. Through love, his throne is made secure. The glory of young men is their strength. Gray hair, the splendor of the old. Blows and wounds cleanse away evil and beatings purge the innermost being. Blows and wounds cleanse away evil and beatings purge the innermost being. Okay, so let's go back and see what commentary we have. Okay, so the first commentary we have in my Life Application Study Bible, this is, I think it's the NIV version. Yeah, NIV. Um, is Proverbs 20, verse 3. Uh, again, Proverbs 20, verse 3 reads, it is, uh, it is to a man's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. A person who is truly confident of his or her strength does not need to parade it. A truly brave person does not look for chances to prove it. A resourceful woman can find a way out of a fight. A man of endurance will avoid retaliate retaliating foolish people find it impossible to avoid strife men and women of character can what kind of person are you um, the next commentary is verse uh, so Proverbs 24 and this one says a sluggard does not plow in season so at harvest time he looks but finds nothing uh, to me this is about being lazy uh, but let's see what this says uh, you've heard some warnings. If you don't study, you'll fail the test. If you don't, if you don't save, you won't have money when you need it. God wants us to anticipate future needs and prepare for them. We can't expect Him to come to our rescue when we cause our own problems through lack of planning and action. He provides for us, but He also expects us to be responsible. So I think that's um, very true. We have a responsibility. We have consequences for the decisions that we make. So Proverbs 20 verse 9 reads, Who can say, I have kept my heart pure, I am clean and without sin? No one is without sin. As soon as we confess our sin and repent, sinful, and repent, sinful thoughts and actions begin to creep back into our lives. We all need ongoing cleansing moment by moment. Thank God he provides forgiveness by his mercy when we ask for it. Make confessions and repentance a regular part of your talks with God. Rely on him moment by moment for the cleansing you need. The next uh, verse is Proverbs 20, 23. 
And this one reads, a man's steps are directed by the Lord. I'm sorry, that was 2024. 2023 says, the Lord detests differing weights and dishonest skills do not please him. And then 2010 said, differing weights and differing measures, the Lord detests them both. So let's read the commentary here. Uh, this says, differing weights refers to the loaded skills a merchant might use in order to cheat the customer. Dishonesty is a difficult sin to avoid. It is easy to cheat if we think that no one is looking, but dishonesty affects the very core of a person. It makes him untrustworthy and untrusting. It eventually makes him unable to know himself or relate to others. Don't take dishonesty lightly. Even the smallest portion of dishonesty contains enough of the poison of deceit to kill your spiritual life. If there is any dishonesty, dishonesty in your life, tell God about it now. So I think that's important because I think uh, we as Christians try not to lie and we want to tell the truth. But I do think if we're honest with ourselves, lying is probably one of the most common sins. We tell white lies um, and it, you know, this is saying even a white lie is a lie and uh, regardless of how small or big the lie is, it's um, poison, poisoning your spirit. And your character, yeah. So, uh, 2024 says, A man's steps are uh, directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand his own way? We are often confused by the events around us. Many things we will never understand. Others will fall into place in years to come as we look back and see how God was working. This proverb counsels us not to worry if we don't understand everything as it happens. Instead, we should trust that God knows what he's doing even if his timing or design is not clear to us. See Psalms 37, 23 for a reassuring promise of God's direction to your life. And I think I already mentioned that, so. And the last commentary is on Proverbs 20, 25. It is a trap for a man to dedicate something rashly and only later to consider his vows. To dedicate something meant that you intended to give it as an offering to God. Dedicating means set apart for religious use. The proverb points out the evil of making a vow rashly and then reconsidering it. God takes vows seriously and requires that they be carried out. And it references Deuteronomy 23, 21 through 23. We often have good intentions when, we, when making a vow because we want to show God that we are determined to please him. Jesus, however, says it is better not to make promises to God because he knows how difficult they are to keep. And that's in Matthew 5, 33 through 37. If you still feel it is important to make a vow, make sure that you weigh the consequences of breaking that vow. In Judges 11, Zephathath, which, pardon my pronunciation, Zephathath made a rash promise to sacrifice the first thing he saw on his return home. As it happened, he saw his daughter first. That's crazy. Um, it is better not to make promises than to make them and then later want to change them. It's better still to count the cost before and then to fulfill them. For a list of other Bible people who made rash vows, see the chart in Judges 11. So I think that that's a, a important one. That The last part of that is, you know, it's better to not make promises than to make them and then later want to change them um, or cancel them or not fulfill them. And I, there's also scripture that talks about let your yay be yay and your nay be nay in that we shouldn't be swear. We shouldn't have to swear to anything. Our word should be good enough um, and we should be people of our word so that we shouldn't have to swear or promise because when we say we're going to do something, we're going to do it. And... Um, so I think that it goes beyond even making promises to somebody that you're going to do something or swearing or making vows, but rather if you're a person of high character, then you're, you shouldn't have to make promises. Your yes should be yes, your no should be no, and people around you should know that you're going to fulfill your word without having to make a promise or a swear or a vow. Obviously, not talking about marriage vows, but, you know, I think that that there's an importance in that. But um, anyhow, that's the end of Proverbs 20. So thanks for joining me today. And 
Sorry for all of the dog distraction in the background. Hopefully that didn't distract you guys. I'm able to zone them out. So um, anyways, have a great night, guys. Bye.